Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, and it is brought to you by PropSwap, America's sports betting marketplace. Sell your sports bets, take your profit, find out how. PropSwap.com. Download the PropSwap app today. Former Green Bay running back Amon Green in 38 minutes. Can't wait to talk to him. You can't wait till you hear what he's up to today. That's at 440 today. Right now, football at 4. I know Andrew DeCecco has a great piece up at InsideTheBirds.com. Taking a look at some of his favorite players from the Senior Bowl. He kind of touched on a couple of them yesterday. Uh, we got the matchups watch in this big game on Sunday. Just talked to Laura Oakman. I thought she had a very interesting point um, about the whole Brady thing. Let's bring Andrew to Checo in and have a little football at four, shall we, on this Wednesday. Back-to-back for Andrew. What's up, man? Hey, Mike. How's it going? All is good. This is a big day, Wednesday. We're kind of midweek, getting ready. It feels like, you know, Super Bowl is finally kind of here. Some storylines. Just had Laura Oakman on. And I, I want to get your take on this because mm-hmm. she said she asked Tom Brady, okay, after week 16 about retiring, right, and said, is it going to be your head, your heart, uh, or your body? And he said none of them, right? So his answer I thought was pretty telling. He says, it won't be my head or my body. There are other priorities in my life. I have a 14 and a 12-year-old who deserve my time and a 9-year-old who deserves my time. I'm getting older, and while I think I could play until 50, I think that's too long for me closer to the end. Now, he said that in week 16, and I don't know that it really ever came out or got out there or anything, but when you hear that and then hear that he said you never say never, does that make you feel like Brady does have some intentions of thinking about coming back? Yeah, and and that's kind of what I alluded to when we spoke yesterday is that it wouldn't surprise me if if he – does make a resurgence at some point. I mean, right now he sounds very much at peace with this decision. Obviously, you know, the family becomes the priority. He wants to see his kids grow up. He's accomplished so much in the NFL right now. So now you, you turn the page to the next chapter if you're Tom Brady and, you you know, you want to you want to be involved in your kids' lives and not be on the road all the time and just be, you know, more hands-on. I mean, based on that answer, I mean, I think that's pretty telling. But, you know, under the right circumstance, it wouldn't surprise me if the situation was right and, and the financials were, were, were in place and enticing enough to bring him back. He still could play till 50. He has proven a lot, and he still is playing at a high level this year. Uh, as it is, so I mean, he he's very much going out uh, on on top in many in many regards. So if if the right team called, kind of like what the Vikings did with with Brett Favre in the twilight of his career, it wouldn't surprise me if you see Tom Brady suit up again. Yeah, I know. Like when I read that, I you know when she told us that story, and then I read the quote, I say, you know, he's got a son fourteen and a son twelve. I know his daughter's nine, so that could be. But you got a 14-year-old kid saying, come on, Dad, play another year. Like, I can see there being a little dissension maybe in the household, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you can see the 14-year-old wanting him to play. And then, yeah. then on the other hand, he's like, oh, you know, I, I want to be there to, you know, be there to watch my kids grow up and, and just be supportive. And the, the, so it's, it's kind of like uh, grappling between the two uh, <laughs> uh, the, the two different decisions. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. But you know what, Mike, with Tom Brady, knowing that he he's, he still has some game left in him, it, like, it wouldn't surprise me if he suited up again. Uh, I agree with you. Andrew DeCecco, Football 4. I do want to talk, you know, one of my favorite things when we usually talk Thursday, I think you do a great job with the matchups. Let's take a look at this because for me, Andrew, I, I just can't get past the Rams' defensive line against the offensive line of the Bengals. Is that the storyline of this game? 100%. And the, the thing is, is, in many aspects, the Bengals sort of remind me of the 2017 Eagles in that they are a team that not many people, I mean, pretty much virtually no one expected the Bengals to be here. And it just seems like they're a team of fate and destiny. That said, the Rams are much more equipped to win this game, both defensively and offensively. And they have an experienced quarterback who, who's in Matthew Stafford. Uh, and, and a lot of weaponry at his disposal. So, I, I mean, it's kind of hard to look past the Aaron Donalds and the, the Von Millers 
and going against the, you know, an offensive line that's, you know, Quentin Spain and Trey Hopkins and right tackle Isaiah Prince, like they're going to be overmatched. And that right there could be the game within the game. Now, Joe Burrow has been able to withstand some pressure. I mean, he was sacked nine times in, in, um, in the first, in the first playoff game. But, you know, that said, how many times are you going to be able to keep responding and rebounding from those hits? Uh, eventually that's going to take its toll. And, you know, I, I kind of, I don't, I wouldn't like it to obviously shape out this way. I would like, to, I like to see good football in a competitive game, but it kind of reminds me of, I kind of can see it unfolding much like the 2018 Super Bowl where the Rams were just sort of outgunned and were never in it. And it was kind of just a flat performance. Andrew, uh, one thing that they can combat it with Cincinnati is they've got Higgins and Boyd and, and Jamar Chase and, and Mixon. They got some weapons. So my question would be then, do the Rams have enough in the secondary to match up? And I don't want to say negate them because they got three pretty good ones, but can they match up with those weapons? Joe Burrow has proven that no matter – if he's under, even if he's under duress, which is going to be the case certainly on Sunday, he's going to be able to deliver the football to his playmakers. And do I think that the Rams secondary, which is comprised of Jalen Ramsey and Darius Williams and Taylor Rapp, who's a young safety, I, I don't know that they have the depth to contain the three receivers and, um, and of course, Joe Mixon. I think Joe Mixon will have an opportunity to – get on the perimeter and have some big gains there. I mean, there, there's going to be some plays to be to, to, to be had there. I still think that uh, Jamar Chase is going to have to draw Jalen Ramsey in coverage, but Jamar Chase is so unique of a player in that you can get him the football in a multitude of ways. He doesn't necessarily have to line up and, and, win, and win traditionally. You can get him the ball in space and let him take advantage of his affability. So I think that he's someone that needs to be in the, in, implemented into the game plan very early uh, in order for the Bengals to get out to a fast start. So I think that the Bengals have enough there to really take advantage of the secondary. It's just a matter of can Joe Burrow facilitate the football? Will he have enough time to do so? Andrew, uh, obviously Cooper Cup, OBJ, you got those two guys. I mean, how does Cincinnati match up with those guys? Because realistically, uh, the run game has not been a big part of the Rams' offense to get here. Akers has been a great story coming back. Uh, but hasn't had the huge impact. It's been Cup and Beckham has really found, I don't want to say a fountain of youth, but a, 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 like a third act here, you know, the New York act, the Cleveland act, this act here in the Rams, he has been a factor. Yeah, well, I'm a big fan of, of the Bengals' safeties and Von Bell and Jesse Bates, but the cornerback situation is, is, is pretty dire. I think there's going to be an event, uh, an, uh, the Rams will be able to exploit that, I think, a little bit with uh, an Eli Apple and Shadobi Awuzie. I think that those guys, if the Bengals aren't able to get home and provide some pressure, those having those guys out there on an island, they will get exploited a bit by Odell Beckham and Cooper Cup, and even Van Jefferson. I think he'll be able to he'll be able to um, find some success there as well. So um, they're going to have to <laughs> they're going to have to get creative in how they how they allocate their pressures and things like that. And, and, and be strategic in, in when they do so because Matthew Stafford will be able to sit back there and pick them apart if they don't get home. Yeah, I think uh, Cup, you know, what makes Cup so unique? Uh, you know, he does, he's not your classic, you know, big, strong, fast, um, you know, Julio, you think of Julio Jones in his prime or like a Randy Moss, those guys who had the physical traits, the speed, they had everything. That's what makes Cup such a unique uh, weapon, I feel like, and that's why teams, I think, have such difficulties in figuring out what to do with them. Yeah, I mean, he, he has decent the decent length, and, and he's a savvy route runner. He has a great feel for spacing and how to find the soft spots in zone. He's very deceptive in his route running and keeps corners guessing constantly. So he's a player that you always have to account for. And just when you think you have him, you're in his back pocket is when he beats you uh, – for, for touchdowns and for long gains. So, I mean, he's a never he's a player that's very difficult to defend, and you sort of look at him and wonder why is that because there's not any one trait that you can really pinpoint and say that he's overwhelming in that, in that regard, but it's just a culmination of things, and he's just so technically savvy and proficient in so many areas, and that's why he's able to win uh, as frequently as he does. Hey, uh, Eli Apple's a local guy, and he has you know been bouncing all over the place, right? Giants, Raiders, just hasn't worked out. 
but it seems that he has turned his career around here in Cincinnati. And some people have even, you know, suggested that, hey, he's had a better postseason and a better run than what Ramsey's gone through. I mean, he has really what does Apple mean to that secondary? Um, well, I think he has the right mentality and the right attitude and, and the willingness to uh I don't know, sort of I think he it's just the it's just the the players that are around him and the scheme and I think just him being so well versed in a multitude of schemes has really helped and maybe he's one of those players that after a number of years in the NFL you, the light bulb just goes off and you and you, you're more mature and you're more refined and things start to come together and make more sense and um I, I think that he really just fits what they look to do. But he, that said, there's areas of his game that can still be exploited, and I think that the Rams will attack him. You know, I, I think that his eyes can get him in trouble sometimes, and he can be a little bit over aggressive and he'll have coverage lapses. So he's someone that I expect them to sort of target early in this game. I uh, also want to get, talk about the weapons, and everybody mentions the three receivers, Chase Higgins, Boyd, obviously. But what Joe Mixon, I thought he was a big key in how they won that game. You know, Burrow gets all the accolades, he's Joe Cool, but their defense was excellent, and, and Mixon really was a big fat. Yeah, Mixon really is a sort of, he's become an afterthought because the offensive line in front of him is so lackluster. His yards per carry aren't overwhelming. And he sort of doesn't get mentioned in that upper echelon of running backs, which he is, by the way. And also the backup, you know, uh, counter to what Mixon can do. So I think that that's a good backfield. And I also think that Chris Evans, the, the rookie running back, the, the third string running back, who's a really prolific pass catcher and, and can space. I, for, for some reason, I feel like he's going to have uh, some plays scripted up to sort of uh, take advantage of his skill set because they're going to need all hands on deck if they want to be able to sort of knock out the, uh, the Goliath here in this game. So I think all three running backs there can have, an, uh, can have a factor on this game. You know, one of the interesting takes in this game, we don't talk about the kicker all that much, right? I mean, but the amount, the percentage of offense that McPherson has meant to the Bengals in this playoff run has been unbelievable and what he has meant to the team And that is a weapon, who knows if it comes down to, but, man, how big of a weapon has he been for this Bengals team? Oh, he's been crucial. I mean, how many many money – money kicks as he made in the postseason and just remains unfazed despite the spotlight and the magnitude and the gravity of the situation. And I be I, I believe that he'll be able to sort of parlay that confidence and, and, and uh, parlay that into the Super Bowl. And I think you're going to see a, a young kicker make some, make some big kicks when the opportunity presents itself. Uh, it's really remarkable to see such a young player remain so poised in these critical moments. So I, I think that, you don't necessarily have to worry about the, the clutch gene with Evan McPherson. I think you just – he'll need his opportunities, and I think he's going to convert them. Um, I do want Brady at the top. Uh, a lot of people looking at Burrow as maybe the face of the NFL moving forward. You got Mahomes. You got him. You got Allen. Is there a lot of pressure on Joe Burrow as everybody is kind of just anticipating that he's the, the guy right now? No, I don't view it that way. I think there's actually more pressure on Matthew Stafford to get the Rams over the hump, knowing what the Rams can ultimately become if they don't, get, knowing that they pushed all their chips into the middle of the table and they said, let's go win it this year. Joe Burrow is a quarterback that we talked about. He's crept into the elite tier, and he, where, where he's helped take the Bengals from where they were just a season ago to right now is encouraging in itself. And just to be here standing in, in, in the Super Bowl, the last two teams standing, is remarkable. That said, the Bengals aren't, aren't going to have that mindset where they're just happy to be here. And I think you're going to see Joe Burrow pray, play free and, and just let his natural ability and, and poise take over. And I, I, I think that if, he, if he's able to get time and, and facilitate the football to his playmakers, uh, it should be a pretty uh, compelling storyline yeah. and, and, and a competitive game throughout. Well, you mentioned that you think Stafford has the pressure. Uh, 13 years, no playoff wins. He gets there. Now he's in the Super Bowl. Why Why is it that you feel he, you know, to me, it's almost, I almost, I'm kind of torn with this because it's like, hey, I got here. Like, but this team has been here before. I think people forget that. Yeah, they have been there before, but knowing how many resources they, they've sort of had to allocate to right. bring in 
free free agent players and acquire all these different resources. They don't have a lot of homegrown talent. They have an aging quarterback that they went out to get because they realized that Jared Goff wasn't the guy to take them there or be able to get them over the hump, I should say. So Matthew Stafford, this is his this is his opportunity. You know, these opportunities are few and far between. Everybody can beat Tom Brady and get to the Super Bowl every season. He may never get back there again. And people want to see if he's able to answer the bell and, and finally deliver now that he has a team around him. So knowing that the, that what the Rams had to do to get him, and they brought him in here for the sole purpose of being the final piece to push them over the over the hump, I think that he, he is going to be looked at w- with more intense scrutiny than Joe Barrow will. Should be fun. Uh, the two quarterbacks, definitely some storylines there. The wide receiving cores, I mean, I don't know that you're going to get – uh, the three on uh, the Bengals, you've got – and and Robert Woods is out. I mean, he obviously – that would be another pick. What's Higby's status? Do we know where he is? Um, I, have, I'm not, I haven't gotten a solid read on, on Tyler Higby, Higby, where he's at. But, I mean, that's another player that – you know he, I mean, he, he burned the Eagles. You remember yeah. that? And he yes. burned them last year. He's a, pretty, he's a pretty athletic pass catcher and, and a guy who I think can be a factor in the red zone. If uh, if he's ready and good to go, yeah, I know that he hasn't practiced, and, and just you know what he you know losing him from their offense would mean. I mean, to me, in the end, it goes back to the first question we had, Andrew. Is I, I just feel that the offensive line problems are eventually going to catch up for the Bengals, right? I mean, is that the to you, to you is that the when you say when I say Andrew, who wins this game and why? Is that the the the, the biggest discrepancy in the talent? Yeah, it's night and day, and but you have to want. You know, it almost makes too much sense, right? Like we thought that from week from the first playoff game, they're going to be overmatched in the trenches. I don't know how they're going to pull this off. Then the second like against Kansas City, how are they going to be able to do this? They're 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 outnumbered in the trenches. And Frank Clark, I thought was going to have a monster game. Well, they were able to prevail. And and now you know I wouldn't put anything past this team right now. It just almost seems like a uh, you know I hate to I hate to use the phrase like team of destiny and. Um, I think ways to win, despite the offensive line sort of folding around them. Joe Burrow is just that good, and they ha- he's surrounded with enough talent. So he's able to overcome shortcomings. So oh. I don't know, Mike. We'll have to see how it goes. Um, I will say, there's a part of you, or part of me anyway, that feels, can we live in a world where the Cincinnati Bengals are the Super Bowl champions? It would feel like the football axis just got completely knocked off track. I don't know that we're ready for that. Yeah, I mean, it sounds weird enough saying that the Cincinnati Bengals are in the Super Bowl, that they yeah, won a playoff game. I don't like, know that how was, that old. Was hard enough for me. Yeah, I don't know how old you are, but man, third of no Bengals uh, Super Bowls, it just makes it feel like something's not right with this. I'm, I'm like afraid of what's going to happen next. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, uh, they haven't been in the Super Bowl since I was born. So, I mean, it's not, <laughs> I'm not I don't usually equate. Cincinnati and, and being a successful football franchise. So it's kind of hard to even for me to even grasp the fact that they're in this game. So, yeah, it, it's been one of those weird seasons where a lot of things have gone, you know, sort of went, you know, turned on its axis. So it, this could be the year where the Bengals, this would make a lot of sense for the Bengals to pull this off and be a Super Bowl champions, given how everything has sort of transpired over the season. All right, Andrew DeCecco, football for who wins and why? Well, I mean, you, you, would like, you would like to see an underdog team like the Bengals win this game, but, I mean, it would be a great story, but I think that the Rams just have too much firepower on both sides of the football, and I don't know that, it'll, that it will be overly competitive. You may see a game, you may see it start to unfold, kind of like how that 21-3, uh, that to 3, how they sort of got into a hole there against Kansas City, and I don't know that they're going to be able to climb out of it because the offensive line is going to be the deciding factor, and they're just not good enough there. Uh, Andrew DiCecco, football at four. Check out his work over at InsideTheBirds.com, A. DiCecco NFL, and all offseason long, uh, free agency, the draft, and everything else that happens in football. Football at four here on the Sports Pass. All right, bud. Thanks, man. You got it. Here's Andrew DiCecco here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN and the free 97.3 ESPN mobile app.